Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.15 and Eagle Dynamics F16C Viper Module. Welcome to bonus video number one, Mark Points. Today we're going to demonstrate the creation of Mark Points uh, using all of the currently implemented mechanisms. Uh, I think this is actually all the mechanisms that are in the real aircraft, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, so we have the ability to drop overfly mark points, HUD designated mark points, uh, mark points using the fire control radar, the FCR, the TGP, the targeting pod, uh, and the HICMIS, or the helmet mounted queuing system. So this gives us quite a lot of uh, capabilities for marking points uh, and coming back to them later. Let's jump into the office, as it were, and have a little look around. Uh, now, mark points are... Um, they take up a block of steer points in the standard software of the F-16, uh, and that is steer points 26 to 30. So you only have the ability to create five mark points, and then they loop around, so just be aware of that. Um, and you're probably going to want to scribble down on your kneeboards, uh, or your notepads, uh, IRL, uh, exactly what each mark point is, because of course the intended use for these uh, is the ability to mark something and come back to it later. So, let's start nice and easy. I'm just bringing down the, the zoom level on my HSD here. Uh, very first one is overfly mark point. So, let's say, for example, we've just been fired upon uh, by a SAM. We're going to want to go defensive, but we may want to return to this area later. Let's say we're a, a seed aircraft. So, um, very quickly, we can press the mark button on the, the ICP to select mark point. By default, it's going to be on HUD. You can actually cycle the mode by pressing sequence on the dauber switch. So let's sequence once. That gives us TGP. Sequence again, FCR. Sequence again, O-Fly for overfly. It's also going to uh, give us a note of what steer point is going to take. And of course, the very first mark point will take up steer point 26. So with overfly enabled, we press TMS up short, and you'll then see that lat and long and the elevation were all just entered. So this is, uh, this is elevation above um, the ground. Um, so this is the exact position the aircraft was in when I pressed TMS up. We can now return, you know, CMI, uh, go back to the CNI page, and you'll also note that here, I'm just going to pause it quickly before it disappears. Oh, pause button didn't work. Okay, my pause isn't working. Don't know why that is. <laughs> There's always something in DCS. Look at this yellow cross. Uh, this yellow cross is how mark points are represented on the HSD. So that was an overfly point, and it was in steer point 26. If I then wanted to navigate back to that at any stage, I could press steer point, enter 26, press the enter key, and you'll see now uh, that we're going to navigate back to that point. That's going to be where the tadpole is going to take us, and that will be the current steer point uh, as per the HSD as well. Um, so that makes life nice and simple. That also, of course, means that that's our current um, sensor point of interest as well. Um, so that's an overfly mark point. Next, let's take a little look at using the HUD. Um, I'm going to go uh, display management switch up short, and you'll see then that I've got an asterisk uh, displayed in the HUD. Let's just shift our view up a little bit. Again, as before, with all of these, you start off basically by going to the mark point page. I'm going to press mark point. It's defaulting to the HUD. Um, because we um, because we had the HUD as the sensor of interest, it's going to tend to default to the sensor of interest. Yeah, I've got the autopilot on. I'm going to actually take the autopilot off to demonstrate the way that the ground stabilization works. Um, so you'll see that we now have a dot in the flight path marker. Uh, that is going to be where the cursor is defaulting to. So I can basically maneuver around and I can put the cursor, the flight path marker, directly on an object and press TMS forward short, and it's then going to leave this, the dot with a circle around it in that location, and that is now ground stabilized. Now, I can use the cursor control switch to actually move that around, and it will move in relation to the ground, not in relation to my aircraft, which is nice. Um, and then if I press TMS short again, it will make that the mark point. If I go TMS aft, you'll see the dot returns to the flight path marker, and I've effectively reset it. I'm just going to turn the aircraft around just now. Let's find a different piece of terrain. 
Let's go down here, and I'm, I'm not going to slew it this time. I'm just going to use the flight path marker. So TMS forward short. There we go. We've left the cursor there. TMS forward short again. And you'll see I've now created mark point, uh, the mark point at steer point 27. And that lat long corresponds to where that... Um, uh, where that cursor position was. And if I go back to the HSD, there you go, little yellow cross, uh, and we can return to the CNI page. So that's a HUD-based uh, mark point. And I wonder, is my cursor actually still there if I come back around? No, I'm going to crash into the ground if I try and see it. Not 100% sure, uh, but I guess if I do TMS aft short, uh, I'll get it. Oh, actually, no, it's taken the sensor of interest away, that's why. Okay, fair enough. Gonna get the aircraft back up to altitude. So, that's overfly, and that's HUD. Next one is FCR, so we can actually create a point using the radar. So, let's go in air-to-ground mode. Let's uh, switch the the uh, fire control radar into ground mapping mode. Just gonna get my altitude back up a little bit, because I don't want to accidentally crash into the ground at any stage. Uh, there are some fairly high mountains here. You can tell that because of the, the large area of, of black here where <laughs> we're getting no returns because of the terrain. Okay, let's level out about there. Gonna put the aircraft into autopilot just to hold us in a nice position. Okay, gonna zoom down on the FCR. We're gonna go display management switch aft. This screen is now a uh, sensor of interest. Gonna bring the... Mm, actually, I'll leave the range out. This is fine. 40 miles. I'm going to choose the right-hand side of this feature over here. Actually, even better, let's choose this little, what appears to be a lake. Let's go and take that. So I'm going to put my cursor in the area that I want. There we go. And now I'm going to take it out of auto-ranging. I'm also going to take it into expand mode and just refine that a little bit. And then I'm going to go into DBS1, DBS2. Yeah, that very much looks like a lake. And uh, I'm going to go TMS forward short. Okay, I've now uh, set my sensor point of interest with the FCR. I'm going to go to the HSD here so I can see what I'm doing. Cross indicates my radar cursor position in the HSD. Let's go mark point, and straight away it's confirming the FCR. TMS forward short, and I've now dropped a mark point at that location. That is mark point 28. And you can see here, underneath the radar cursor, there's a little yellow uh, square again. And if I come, um, actually, if I CNI out, and if I go TMS aft, I've broken that radar lock. I could then move uh, move the cursor out of the way. Actually, I'll just put it back into normal mode. It's going to make life easier. And you can see, there we go, little yellow cross. So that's a, a mark point created using the FCR. Next, we're going to go for the TGP. Now, I've actually had a bit of trouble with the DG TGP, so this may or may not work. I found it rather difficult to make it work. Let's pop the TGP into Snowplow, just to make our lives nice and easy. Uh, display management switch aft to make it sensor of interest. Uh, we're going to go TMS aft. Oh, actually, no, I need to take it out of Snowplow. That's the problem. Uh, and I'll slew it onto something. I don't know what I'm going to go for here. Let's go over here and let's go narrow. That looks fine. Let's go TMS forward, and we're now in a point track. Let's go mark point, and it still has the FCR, which is very interesting. Uh, let's sequence until we get targeting pod. There we go, TGP. Let's make the TGP our sensor of interest again. TMS forward, TMS forward again, and yeah, this is what I've been having. I cannot seem to actually... Um, I cannot seem to actually make a mark point using the uh, using the targeting pod, but that is how it should work. If for some reason it doesn't, uh, and if anybody knows why that might be, uh, I'd love to hear about it. Yeah, so yeah, I get a point track, and my understanding was that's all you had to do. And if I go into mark, it's in TGP TMS forward again and absolutely nothing happens. Okay, so that may or may not be a bug, but th that's the procedure that uh, Matt Wagner uh, demonstrated in his video all about mark points. He had the TGP up as the sensor of interest, he had a point track, he opened mark point and he pressed the TMS forward. So if that's a bug, maybe at some point it will be fixed. And then the last mechanism is the helmet mounted queuing system. Now this is a pretty fun one, and let's just come out of air to ground mode for now. 
Um, if we come down to here and bring up our symbology, we will then have uh, our helmet-mounted queuing system up and running. And actually, we need it in air-to-ground mode. Um, so what we do for this one is, you'll see I've got the asterisk in the HUD, so that means that by default the HUD would be the sensor of interest. However, if I move off axis and I've got the helmet mounted queuing system up, if I press target management switch up long and then release, okay, it's not working. <laughs> Why is it not working? Um, all right, okay, do I need to first have the mark point screen up? So mark HUD and then come out. TMS up long and release. There we go. Now we've got the circle. So yeah, you already have to have the mark point page up and HUD selected. Um, and much like the HUD mode, uh, this first ground stabilizes when you press TMS up. So I'm going to choose over here, TMS up. You'll see the cursor is now sticking with the ground. It's ground stabilized. And again, I can use my cursor switch to move it around. Or I could TMS aft to bring it back to the aiming cross on the helmet mounted queuing system. TMS up again. I'm fairly happy with that position, so I'm going to look back at the DED, press TMS up one last time, and it's created steer point 29 with those details. And again, down here on the HSD, I've got a yellow cross. The mark points are always displayed as yellow crosses. So I can CNI out of that, and we're all set up. So that's basically almost everything that you can do with mark points. I've demonstrated overfly, HUD, FCR, TGP sort of, although I couldn't get it to work, uh, and uh, helmet mounted queuing system. Now the last thing that you can do with mark points is that you can share them, because we all know sharing is caring. Um, so what you can do, if you have the HSD up, and if you have the HSD as your sensor of interest, which I've just done by pressing display management switch aft twice, and you'll see now I've got a, a solid box around my HSD, Make sure that your transmit is, is on. Uh, I'm using link 16 here. Uh, then make sure that you choose one of the steer points. So we can always return to a particular steer point using the steer point page. Let's take the one that we got with the helmet mounted queuing system. So if I go steer point 29, oh, no, not 26, 29, and press enter, you'll see now that my cross is on that one. And with the HSD as your uh, sensor of interest, press IFF in long and you'll see that transmit is boxed and then goes off again. That would transmit that mark point to all of your ringmen uh, and they would have that available. Now one thing to note is that whenever the HSD is not your sensor of interest, so let's just switch it back to the TGP just now, pressing um, the IFF inboard long will transmit your current sensor point of interest. So when, you're, when you've got the HSD set sensor of interest, it's always going to be your currently selected steer point. Uh, if you do it without the HSD sensor of interest, it's always going to be your current speed. So I'm doing uh, IFF in long just now, and that would actually be me transmitting my speed to my wingmen. So that's one last thing to be aware of there. I will do uh, a video a little bit later on all the functionality of the data link, uh, but not everything is implemented yet, so I'm going to wait just a little bit longer. So, I hope you all enjoyed that. That was bonus video number one, all about mark points. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and the channel. Super excited about how many subscribers I've got now. Thank you very much for your support, and I'll see you all next time.